All right, welcome to the after work video. In the last video, we did a little bit of reading of eVPNs. Um, it's kind of a, a, um, it's a, so it's a brand new technology. There's really not too many good uh, resources out there yet, especially as far as taking a test on it goes. So we just read a basic overview and then I tried to convert the topology I was using for multicast VPNs and VPNs over to use eVPN instead. And uh, it, was, it was going pretty well. I got all the configuration to commit, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get an end-to-end -end ping to work. So we're gonna try to get that to work now uh, without using any Google searches, anything like that. Just uh, question marking on the CLI, um, taking any hints I can get from uh, help, help apropos, which there's no help topic or help reference, um, and just just uh, brute forcing it, trial and error, for this hour after work video until hopefully I get it to work. If I don't get it to work though, and there's only 10 minutes left, I think I will do a Google search and try to see where I went wrong uh, because I don't want to devote another video to this. This will be the last video for this before I continue on normally. All right, so I will share my second screen and pull up my lab. So it's um, because it goes through that cron reboot, it's um, I can't just leave it up. I gotta reopen the project, the project closes. Okay, so, but we're right back at it. So let's go back to PC1. And I did save the configs now, so hopefully they're still there. Let's do a show IP. So nope, they're still not there, even though I, I saved them. Uh, that's okay, we'll just reconfigure them. So we're gonna open up the CE so that we know what to configure them with. I mean, I'd rather have that than having to reboot the device. Before, I would have a, a six-minute uh, delay, and that was just awful. So having a, um, you know, and then I'd have to reboot it anyway. So these cron jobs are really working out for me. I really, I'm glad to have cron jobs. Okay, so let's do a show interfaces terse pipe match g dash. Uh, okay, so it's going to be this IP slash twenty four. I thought it was. Let's see here. Yep. And then, oops, so I gotta give it a host address though. Okay. All right, so this is going to be eleven. All right, so let's try to ping end to end. Yep, and this is the problem we had last time. We've got a network host unreachable, and this is coming from 12.1. So it's coming from the CE here. So let's do a show route. So it's coming from this interface. Uh, once it gets there, it doesn't have, it's not learning a route for, for this. IP address, let's confirm that for sure. Yep, there's absolutely nothing there. So let's take a look at what is being learned. Oh, 
Okay, so I think one thing we can do is set up a, because the problem is that it doesn't know Yeah, it doesn't know that it needs to go to the the Yeah, it doesn't know to go to the um EVPN. So now see I thought I thought how this would work is it would be able to form a OSPF adjacency like that's where that's where it, 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 it's I'm confused so let's let's do a, a ping okay so here's here's obviously the problem I can't ping uh, across the eVPN so there is certainly a problem with the eVPN Yeah, and then a trace route, it won't even, it, I mean, it's it's not across different routes, so it's not even, it doesn't even make sense to do a trace route in this scenario. So it's really just a problem with the eVPN. These devices, these, these IPs are not able to communicate with each other. So it can't form an OSPF adjacency. That's the problem. So we're going to need to open up PE1 and PE2 and uh, troubleshoot on, on those two devices. All right, so let's see what the differences here are. So we've got quite a few differences. I think uh, I think one of the main things is I, I oh, I've got an extra PIM configuration on here. Let's get rid of that. There's just no need for it. I don't think it will fix the issue, but it will make the config easier to look at. Okay, so we've got more extra config on here. So protocols MPLS, it looks like there's, ah, so the, um, loopback is missing from protocols and PLS on uh, on this router so let's um yeah let's add that in there just so that they match again I don't know if, if this is, is gonna fix things um, but, but um, I just want the configs to, to match so that they're easier to compare. Okay, so now the configs match a lot more and the differences is not in the number of lines of config, it's the contents of the configuration, which is good. So we've got our, our front door here to our eVPN. So we've got our, our encapsulation Ethernet VPLS interfaces, the family VPLS. Then we've got this interface added to the routing instance, VPNA. Instance type is eVPN. So we've got the route distinguisher, and we've got the route target, let's see. Okay, and then the route distinguisher is different across the two, but it's the same uh, route target. 
So here we've got, yep, because they're left and right facing interfaces. So the left facing interface is a core link to P. So it's got MPLS. Um, it also has a IP address, which is kind of strange. Um, I'm not sure if it needs that or not. I think it does though, because um, we're forming a label switch path. So uh, okay, yeah. So let's let's start by um, well, first of all, let's make this e even easier on ourselves because we don't need this here anymore. Um, let's just confirm that that's no longer needed. Okay, yep, so it's not being called anywhere, it's just configured. So let's make this even easier on ourselves and, and get rid of all the unnecessary configuration. I might even do th this sort of thing on the test to like do a, um, just when I when I sit down at the device, I might do a um, show configuration pipe display set pipe uh, save, and then uh, and then I'll have a copy of what's on there now, and then I can I can see um, how that changes, or just throw it in a notepad. But I think I'll definitely do this so that I have a a, a glance of of what was there beforehand. So if I make changes, I'm not like Oh no, what did I do? Um, but of course, you know, you can always do the show system rollback compare one zero. Um, so I think that's the main thing. I just, the more time I, I sit and, and don't know what I'm doing, um, the less time I have to implement the things I do know what I'm doing on. So, all right. So, Let's do a, oh, look, yeah, let's get rid of it from this side as well. All right, so let's get a fresh show run from here or active configuration as it's called in Juniper. A fresh view of the active configuration. Okay, so everything looks for the most part pretty straightforward now. Um, yep, we've got everything configured as I would think that it needed to be. Um, but obviously what I think is not entirely correct because it's not coming up, but I think this is a good place to start. So let's do some show commands on that. Well, first of all, let's show MPLS LSP. And then, um, yeah. So our LSP is up. That's not going to be the problem. Let's do show RSVP neighbors. Okay, RSVP neighbors up. That's not a problem either. I do notice the address looks kind of strange. Oh, that's probably the, the P router. So yeah, it, it's a neighbor with the interface here. Yeah, because I was thinking this was the PE2 neighbor. Oh, nope. So yeah, I guess some of these addresses are kind of strange um, to me. Huh. Especially since they're being learned through OSPF. So OSPF, I just have the um, 
what links do I have for OSPF? Ah, so this is P1. So yeah, I just have the links uh, between the PEs for OSPF. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, okay. I think a, a RSVP neighbor is just uh, from, from device to device. So if I do a show RSVP neighbor, I'm forming a neighborship to the loopback and then to the interface of the P router. So both of those, the PE doesn't know about unless through an IGP. Yeah, I think the P router is gonna be important. Oops, there's still that issue where I can't double click to open it. Okay. But everything looks pretty much good on it. But yep, you can see. Yeah, so I think everything's fine on the P router. Um, really, uh, the EVPN configuration is going to be on the PEs. So let's try some key show EVPN. Um, yeah, let's try statistics. Ah, well, let's do show route. Okay, and then it's going to be, this is the EVPN table. So let's take a look at that on both sides. Oops, so I've got to use the table keyword. Oops, I hit, I hit enter an extra time, so they're not lined up. Oops, I did it again. Okay, let me just hit enter once. Okay, there we go. So what's the difference between the two here? They've got different, so this is 9.1, and then this is 7.1. Let's see what 7.1 is. Show route. Okay, so 7.1 is my own loopback address. So I wonder if, um, if this MAC address is the same as the loop address, loopback address, MAC address. So, nope, that's quite a bit different. I'm not sure which MAC address this belongs to. Okay, so maybe it's a MAC address here. Yeah, I don't think you'll find a MAC address on the loopback interface because it'll just be the MAC address here. So yeah, it's kind of interesting that we've got this as a OUI. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder where that MAC address is coming from.
I think if I knew where this magic address was coming from, that might really help me out. And unfortunately, if I do a show interfaces, we can see that OUI is, is really foreign. Yeah, so if we do, oh, no, it's not. Okay, so that's good. Apply it, match. Okay, so, so it's probably one of these. Um, let's look at that printout again. Okay, so it's 2E03. Well, I don't see 2E03, but I do see the OUI 0C6308. So this is a Juniper device, so I'm hoping maybe the Mac is from this side. Okay, so now let's do a show route on this side as well. Okay, so let's go back over to the other side and we're gonna look for 75AC02. Okay, and we don't have 75AC02, unfortunately. Um, let's go to the other side and let's look for 362E03. Don't got it, so let's check the P router. Oops, so the P router is having difficulty. Ah, okay. So let's start with the PE2 address. So it's going to be 75AC02. Nope. All right, let's see if the other one's on there. 362E03. Nope. All right, so let's check the CEs. I mean, I'm encouraged a little bit because they the OUIs are Juniper devices, so it's got to be somewhere. All right, let's start with CE1, and we'll check both of these. So let's start by checking 630875. Okay, so let's move on and check 0C... Or, or 362E03. Perfect. So we found it on the Juniper. Or sorry, on the, the CE. So 362E03. So it's going to be GE001 uh, is what is populating here. Okay, so this uh, interface here is being populated here, but it's not being passed, exchanged to here. So we need to figure out a way to get this information sent over to the other side. Um, so perhaps a, a route policy or, or something like that. an export policy or something. So yeah, 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 yeah. I think that would make sense if we did a, if we exported, 
it into into BGP, and then we had a, a special family. Let's see if that's a way to do it. Aha, so yep, we've got a special family eVPN. All right, so now we're going to need a policy to uh, export these VPNs into BGP. Let's just try it without the policy first um, and see if things work, but I have a feeling we will need a manual export policy into BGP. Because that's just how BGP works. It doesn't work like IGPs where you just add interfaces to it and it knows what to do. You've got to explicitly tell it which routes go into it. Uh, and of course, you don't have to do that route by route. That would just be un unruly. But you've got to tell it, you know, you can give it groups of routes that belong to it or, or uh, types of routes, all, all OSPF routes and the BGP, that sort of thing. So let's figure out how about that policy is going to look like. Edit uh, routing policy, or sorry, edit policy options, policy statement, eVPN. Uh, and let's call it eVPN to BGP. OK. We'll do a set from protocol. So. So I don't see anything saying eVPN. Oh, I do. I'm, I'm just blind. Okay, so I think this is gonna work. Um, one last piece of configuration is missing. And that's actually exporting it. So let's do set protocols, BGP, group, group, eVPN, export, uh, eVPN to BGP. Okay, so I think this is all we're gonna need. Let's commit it and then do it again on the other side. Okay, so we're going to need the actual statements. We'll need the export. Um, and we'll need the, the family. I think those are the four things I added. Let's go and look at the show pipe compare. So, yep. Yep, that looks right. Okay, so let's um, take a look at that eVPN table again. Aha, now that looks a lot better. We've got the other side um, populating. We don't only have our own information, we have information from the other side as well. Let's take a look at PC1 and see if we can ping over to PC2 now. Perfect. So everything is great. Um, let's take a look at the trace routes. Oops, uh, I think it's going to be trace is the command. All right, so there you go. It's got um, it's basically, uh, you know, w w no hops away. Um, 
because uh, this is just all one big seamless wire now, thanks to to um, thanks to eVPN. So much much better customer experience. It m might take a bit more setup on the ISP's part, but the customer really reaps the benefit from that. Because you can see in that VRF, they needed to enable OSPF, they needed to have IPs, they really needed to do a whole lot more than is necessary with just eVPN. Yep, and now we've got an OSPF neighbor over that. So, so yeah, things are, are good for sure. Yeah. Well, cool. I actually was expecting that to take a lot longer. <laughs> that really didn't take too long. Um, but that's kind of the power of um, stopping to think. And that's something I really need to be able to do during the test because I honestly did not know what was required at all, but I stopped to think and um, I looked at what was in the table for eVPNs and I saw only my information is in the table. I'm not getting anyone else's. Well, how do I get other people's information in the table? They send it to me, they export it to me and um, you know that so I've got I've got BGP neighbors and stuff, but I'm just not sending the information to the, the neighbors. Oh, and it, I've got a problem with uh, with my neighborship to the P router, but I mean that that doesn't matter. I'm, I'm surprised they even had a neighborship to the P router. Yeah, I'll I'll just take that out. Yeah, I'm kind of at a loss for for what to do. I'm maybe even end early because uh, I'm actually pretty happy with myself for being able to figure that out. Um, just coming up with a policy on the fly and getting that to work because that's a lot of what I'm going to need to do during the test. So I'll just tear down those extra BGP connections and I'll verify that the ping still works. Of course it's going to because that's just extra config. The neighborship wasn't even up, it was inactive. So just more paranoia kind of right now there's no harm during the test there might be some harm because I'll lose some time if I do that but um, okay so let's go back and do the ping again so just do the trace route yep so oh so now we've got an extra hop though which is interesting I guess it's showing up now before it, it wasn't showing up the, the same way. Huh. Yeah, it's interesting that the output there um, appears to have changed. Um, I'm actually curious enough to, to roll back because all I did was um, got rid of the configuration that was resulting in a dead uh, BGP neighborship. Oh, okay. So now it, yeah, I wouldn't have, what? It might just be the, the virtualization being funny too. But yeah, that, that's what I expected. It, it, it looks the same. I'm not sure what was going on. Yeah, there's no difference. Okay, yeah, so I mean, I guess I can end this early because I was able to figure it out. I'll open out the config one more time and I'll kind of take it through piece by piece. So I needed to change it to Ethernet and PLS because I don't have VLAN tagging enabled. Um, it might be on the test to enable VLAN tagging. I've got VLANs down, like that's not gonna be an issue for me, so. We'll need to go through that, I don't think.
Um, so then in addition to that, of course, I needed my uh, VPN instance, type VPN, add that to it. Um, I need a route distinguisher, I need a VRF target, I need to enable the VPN protocol within it. Um, then I need to turn on eVPN signaling within BGP, and then I need to give routes for BGP to send through eVPN. So I gave them all my eVPN routes, which was my own information, and I sent that over to PE2 by doing that. So PE2 had information to uh, establish an OSPF neighborship. And uh, yeah, that's all it needed to do. And uh, at that point, the CE1 could ping across the wire. So yeah, really not that hard at all. Yeah, so I mean, tomorrow's a holiday. Um, so I've got the day off from work. Oh, okay, there we go. So I think uh, I'll just end it early here. Um, that'll be the end of, of VPNs, eVPNs. E and uh, tomorrow I'll, I'll do uh, some extra videos because I'll have some extra time and hopefully make up for, for lost videos now. But um, yeah, thanks for, for watching. Um, I'm going to be going back to my normal... Um, my normal track. Okay, so this is three, and I'll make a note. It was um, figured out on my own how to set up an EVPN. Okay, so yep, this is going to be the last in that. So in fact, I'm going to go and and mark it off right now. Yeah, and and th these are all like pretty similar. Like like it really just comes down to the um, as far as I know the instance type, and then that kind of that determines what kind of uh, families you need to enable for for your protocols BGP. You know, depending on the instance type, you might need to enable the specific protocol for it. So it's just it's just like, um, you know, am I, um, well, I don't have a good analogy for it, but I think it's, it's pretty intuitive. You don't really need to have all the dirty details to, uh, to understand how to, to set it up. So I'm hoping the exam is pretty merciful in that regard, um, where let, let's see what other kinds of things there are. Yeah, so I'm hoping the, the exam won't say like, oh, don't use control word or have an MC, enable MC leg support or uh, set up some EVI options. Um, it might and, and I'll, I'll uh, hopefully be able to question mark it out or use help apropos. But um, but I'm hoping it, it won't it won't be like that. From everything I've read, it will be like that. <laughs> but um, but I'm feeling pretty confident that um, if it's graded so that those are just extra points, I can get the the main bulk of the points. Okay, so eVPNs are now done. Okay, so I'll be going back to my regular order. So next video, I will be working on BGP configuration and troubleshooting for route reflection. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.